So in this lesson, we are going to talk about the properties of equality, which is uh, the set of properties that we use to solve equations. And they're not for simplifying, they're for solving equations. There are things that you can do to equations, there are ways equations relate to each other uh, that maintain the truth value of the equal. Because when you're given an equation, you're told that two expressions are equal, and you've got to maintain the equal uh, throughout the entire process. So the first three here, Reflexive, symmetric, and transitive really aren't used for solving equations. These are more used for things like proof in algebra too. The reflexive says very simply that A equals A, and we don't use that when we solve equations. Symmetric says that if A equals B, then B equals A. And you can use a symmetric property to rearrange the sides of the equation. So if you have, like if you have to have the unknown on the left side of the equation, but it's on the right side, then you can just swap it using the symmetric property. And we don't use transitive very much at all. It says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. All right, so we don't use this very much in Algebra 1. You use this a lot in geometry, but not so much in Algebra 1. The ones we're focusing in on are these two, and their little cousins, subtraction and addition. What the addition property of equality says is that I can add the same quantity to both sides of the equation, and the equation is still equal. And what multiplication's uh, property of equality says, it says that I can multiply both sides of an equation by something, and the equal, it'll stay, stay equal, as long as it's not zero. Don't multiply both sides of an equation by zero, because that gives you nothing but zero. All right, and I said there are two cousins. There's subtraction and division. In reality, they're just these five properties of equality. But in Algebra 1, we say that there are four that we use, these two and their, their buddies. All right, so first let's talk about what the addition property of equality says. We're going to call it APO because I don't want to keep writing addition property of equality, so APO. Um, it says that if I'm given some equation, like where A equals B, I can add the same thing to both sides of the equation and it's still equal. So I can add the same quantity to both sides. Um, and it makes sense, it's staying balanced. I'm adding a 5 to one side, I have to add the 5 to the other side to maintain the balance of the equal. So that's what APO says. Subtraction has a, a version of the property of equality. And we're going to call this one SPO. SPO. And it says if A equals B, then A minus C equals B minus C. And it says I can take away the same quantity from both sides of the equation and it's still going to be equal. Um, and then I have the multiplication property of equality, which we're going to call MPO. So MPO says that if I have if A equals B, then AC equals BC. So I can multiply both sides of the equation by the same quantity and it's going to maintain its equivalence. Now I have to be careful, I have to actually multiply the entire side of the equation. So if there are multiple terms on one side of the equation, I have to use parentheses. And the last one is the division property of equality, which we're going to call DEPO. And what DEPO says is that if I have A equals B, then A over C equals B over C. And the reason why we write the division with the vinculum as opposed to with the division symbol, the obelisk, is because we need to emphasize that you're dividing the entire side of the equation by the same number. So if you have more than one term on one side of an equation, you have to divide the entire side out. So it's easy just to show that with the vinculum. All right? So these are the four properties of equality that we're going to use to solve equations. APO, SPO, MPO and DEPO for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And um, what, which one you use depends on what the equation gives you. The whole point of solving an equation is to undo whatever has been done to x. So if something has been subtracted from x, then you're going to add. If something has been divided, then you're going to multiply. So you want to use the, the inverse operations, the operation that undoes. So this lesson is called Solving Equations 101, and in it I'm just going to describe the basic strategy that you're going to use when you solve equations. Okay, so first thing you have to do is you have to remember that you're given an equation that's where two sides are equal. And whatever you do to one side 
you have to do to the other side. So if you're gonna add something to one side, you have to add it to the other side. So whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, you have to make sure that you do something that's gonna maintain the equal. So this is super, super important because if you don't do this, you're gonna get the wrong answer. Second thing, and you'd think I wouldn't have to say this, but don't do anything that makes the problem worse, okay? You can do whatever property of equality you want to an equation. If you wanted to, you could add pi to both sides. However, adding pi to both sides would make things worse. So why do it? So when, you, when you're solving an equation, what you're really doing is you're undoing whatever has been done to the unknown. And so you need to make sure that each step you take gets rid of something that was done. So don't do anything that makes things worse, all right? Choose your pose wisely. Next, you need to be able to justify your steps. Well, first, you gotta show your steps, and then you have to be able to justify them. That means every step you take needs to have a mathematical property behind it, backing it up, uh, so that you know that um, when someone asks you, you can say like, hey, I did this, and I used this property. So you can totally justify to someone that your answer is correct. Now, before you do that, you should always check your answers on your own. That's one of the things I loved about mathematics was when we got to the point where we can solve equations, we could plug the answers in to make sure they worked. So always check your answers. And it's gonna seem kind of annoying with the really simple equations, but actually when we start to get into the more complicated equations that involve square roots, you have to check your answers because sometimes you actually will keep all these other things, you do all these other things correctly and you'll get an answer that actually doesn't work. So make sure you check your answers. And you don't have to do that on paper. You can do that on the calculator. And when we do examples, I'll show you examples of how to use a calculator. The last thing, and this is the only thing that's like truly new for most of you, is going to be how I want you to write your solution. You have to write your solution in something called solution set notation. And so I'm gonna show you that when we do examples. And so the examples are all in, in another video, but before I do that, uh, show those, uh, before you watch those videos, uh, you will notice that there are three hamsters in the corner. There is Beast, Cheddar, and Buttercup. Okay, so when we go through these examples, Beast, Cheddar, and Buttercup will appear in the videos. If you only see one hamster in the video, that means those problems are really easy. If you see two hamsters appear, that means those problems are more challenging. And oh no, if you see all three hamsters appear, that means that problem that you're about to simplify or solve is going to be very challenging, all right? So look out for Beast, Cheddar, and Buttercup.